Hey, welcome back. <clears throat> okay, so we're getting ready to start the second impulse, and I don't have a lot of good choices. So, um, this one is activating just a single unit in the uh, Panzer core, which I'm not super thrilled about. Although, let's see where they are. I'm going to look up where the Piper and the 150th Panzer Brigade is. Um... I think I've seen the Piper before because he's got like a big value of six. Yep, that's him right there. That's Piper. And then who would be the 150th? I think it's that guy and he's been injured. So no good with him. So the Piper one is interesting because it costs zero to activate him. And he ignores Allied Zone of Controls, but it says 18. So does that mean I can't activate him until turn 18? Oh, crap. It does say I can activate him on turn 16. Um, or no, I can activate him right here. Turn, it's the 150th. Can't be activated until turn 18. But Piper I can do on 17. So what would I do with him? That's the question. Uh, Piper has a movement of six. So I can go one, two, three. I can actually go to here, which is actually, yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna do a one to here. So here's my question. Do I do a roadblock check there? It technically is still in supply, but it's in our zone of control. Um, let me check. If I enter a hex adjacent to an empty, in-supply, allied position hex with a road that is itself not adjacent to any other unit. Oh, that's it. It's adjacent to us, so it doesn't count. Okay. So, that was one, then two, and then three to here. Um, now the problem is I have to do a check on this one, but not that one. So um, we're going to roll die and I'm going to just move you over here. I rolled a six, so nothing happens. And that was one, two, three. Now if I want to leave the road to go here, that's a broken, that would be two. So that's five. So now, here's my question. I already checked this, and now that I moved here, do I check this again a second time? I'm going to say yes. I rolled a six. Okay, I'm not going to check the four because it's next to a unit, and then I'm going to move to here. And so I remove the VDH. Um, I don't know what good this is doing me to get all the way to here. Uh, it actually, in fact, might be the stupidest thing I've ever done. But I scored a victory point. <sighs> that means I actually used this little marker here. I didn't even remember what it was there for. Okay, so I scored a victory point and I rescued, or went to the Vonderheit. Uh, so let me look up, do I get anything else for that? That seems rather weak. It just says remove it and gain a victory point. Yay, team. So we got a victory point for that. Um, I mean, I guess uh, we exert zone of control. So those towns that are next to him are... All right, I'll take it. I'll just take it. Um, all right, so uh, now we move on to our next command. And going through, we have uh, this one is an interesting one because it's these three. 
but I just don't find them to be all that strong. Uh, we have this one, which we already said, um, the first SS has been uh, hit pretty hard. And it's just specific divisions, so I'm not very excited about that one. And then this one here is, uh, it's the one that's way up, the red ones that are way up north, just off the camera. Uh, not excited about them either. Um, so, uh, I think the one I'm landing on is just going to be a specific individual division. It's this one. But it's the, see there, it says the 116th Panzer Division. So we're going to activate the 116P and 560, no, I'm sorry, that's the Allied action. We're going to activate the 116P or the 560 VG Division. So we're going to do the Panzer Division, the 116 Panzer Division. So uh, it has a 1, so we could, uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Assault Coordination. And I'll show you um, what I'm thinking of doing with this. It's a little crazy. Okay, so from a strategy perspective, we're ready to break through here. And remember I said I was concerned about this guy being surrounded. Well, that's exactly what we're going to try to do. The 116th is... Um, this guy has no marker of any kind to say what division he's from. Is that a misprint? I guess he's just with the core, and that's it. Okay, so the 116th includes this guy, which can't really go anywhere. So we're going to attack him. And then I am... Um, I'm going to coordinate. And uh, so that coordination means I'm going to move somebody. So I'm either going to move these guys... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Assault coordination... I, I'll explain that in a second. So this guy can move here for two. Or no, I'm sorry, it's clear. He can move there for one and get on the road. But then we have to roll for this check. And let's not fail. Okay, that's a 10. So we're good. Okay, so then it's going to move there. Okay, so we're surrounding him. That's the idea. So even if I can't defeat him, uh, he's not going to be able to retreat without taking damage. Right here are zones of controls that we have on him. Um, and this is also from the 116th P. But the, um, the assault coordination is this guy is from the, um, the 560, which is not being activated this round. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to uh, coordinate our assault with him so he's going to join us in the attack on this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go over and make sure I get my marker on, it's a particular division, which is, it's the core, it's the LVIII, so that's what, uh, 50, 58? Yeah, it is. And then the other one we did was just the uh, the Piper. So I got to put a little marker on him. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, he's got a two pip minimum. Uh, we're one, two, three, four, as you can see. Uh, so two minimum, four max. We add one because of elite. So that goes to five. And I think that's going to cover it. Um, he's not out of fuel, because the fuel check was at the beginning of the turn, not now. Or at least I'm, I'm assuming that that's the case. Um, I'm just checking. He's not out of supply, he's not isolated. We do have to draw his card, so let's do that. Um, he is doing engineers. Okay, so uh, what does engineers do for him? Let's check that real quick. He's a defender, so he's going to get an improved marker. Oh, that punk. Um, yep. 
Yep, he's getting one. Chimney Christmas. Okay, so uh, he gets an improvement marker. All right, so we get, um, we said four and then we added one for five and then one more for the combat tactic, makes it six. So I believe we can draw six. Um, all right, so uh, let's do this. Uh, he's drawing two. That's the minimum. So with two minimum, six maximum. What's our odds? We have three, six, 10, 14 to four. So that's uh, three to one. It's not super fantastic. So here's two. Is the attacker green? Nope. Is the attacker elite? Yes, he takes a hit. Is the defender elite? No. Is the defender green? No. So nothing happens. And uh, I'm gonna draw up to the six. So four more. One, two, three, and then stop. And shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Four. So are we greater than six to one? No, we're not. Are we greater than four to one? What did I say we were? Four, seven, we were about 12 to four, no. So this is out. Do we have artillery? No. Do they have artillery? No. Is the 5th Panzer Army or allied... Oh, what Panzer Army are they? They are the 5th! Yes, they are! <laughs> okay. Um, only attacker has combined arms. That is not true, I don't think. He has... He has combined arms. There's an infantry and a tank. So that stinks. Only defender has combined arms. Not true in either of the case. So we did two hits on him. Uh, all that work for two hits. His improved position, which stinks, uh, cancels one of his hits. And so we at least destroyed that. And now we have to apply one more hit, which, as you know, is... Um, not a guaranteed retreat. So, uh, would losing a step cause him to exert no zone of control? No, it would not. So we go to D. We're going to do a hold check. The hold value of the hex is 2. Okay? The steps is 2, so that's 4. Nobody's attacking across the river. Is the defending unit surrounded or out of communication? I'm gonna say yes, because we cut them off. Um, so we said four, that's minus three, that becomes one. If all retreat routes would require an extra step loss, that would be true, I believe, because if he has to retreat, see it says into an unoccupied hex in enemy zone of control in friendly supply, remove a step. So I'm gonna say yes. So that means he's adding another four. I don't understand. Like, if he's surrounded and then he's going to take a step loss for retreating, why would we minus three and add four? But okay, so I'm going to add four. Now we're at five. So five. And if the result is less than or equal to five, apply a step loss. Otherwise, he retreats, which is still going to be a step loss. Okay. Um... So I got a three. So he's gonna just take a step loss and stay where he's at. Just like that. And he's no longer a combined arms guy either. Okay, so uh, that ends my um, my impulse. And it actually ends the day, because that's, oh no, no, I'm sorry, I have, I have two more cards left. So I did this for nothing. <laughs> okay, so let's do his action. And it's a no command, and he's doing an engineer. Um, so, engineer is different whenever it's a command versus a combat tactics. That's right, he's going to replace a roadblock in a VP hex or an allied supply with an allied reserve unit. So if there's more than one roadblock on the map, replace the marker in the highest... Da -da -da. If a reserve unit is placed, the engineer event is complete. So, it 
it says to check section 15.4 for uh, details on whether or not a reserve unit gets placed. So I'm at least grateful that they told me where to go in the rule book. I do always like that. Okay, if a roadblock reserve check calls for replacing a roadblock with an allied reserve unit, place the reserve unit in the position from the same army as the allied unit nearest to the position and remove the roadblocker. If possible, take a unit in the same division as the on-map allied unit closest to the roadblock. If none, then the same core. And if a choice remains, lowest number unit. Okay, so the only thing that, um, so same division or same core. So let's say I can't do the division or the core. If no reserve units are available which meet the above criteria take an out of contact unit from the map as the reserve unit to replace the roadblock and if there's nothing satisfied there then uh, nothing happens and the roadblock is eliminated okay so i think so let's look at this situation. All right, so the, uh, the division is the 9A division, and the core is the 8th core. I'm very confident they don't have anything in the reserve for this um, core or division, because remember, we, we drew cards that, that deployed them already. So uh, there, there's nothing there. So then um, the weirdness is, is it says that if there's nothing that satisfies that condition, then we have to go find somebody who's out of contact and just move them there. And I think if I read this correctly, I'm taking this unit and just flying him, teleporting him to there. That's what I read. It seems a little wonky to me. <laughs> But that's what I read, is that I'm supposed to do that. Because he was out of communication, and it was somewhere else on the map. Now, it is possible that these guys are out of communication. Um, I don't know my communication rules well enough, but I can tell you this one's in communication because he can go this way. I can tell you this one's in communication because I believe he can go through the enemy unit here and then exit that way. Now my question is, because I don't want to make you guys wait for me to look this up, is he in communication? If I can piggyback through both of these units, of course he is. But can I really go through two units, or is the rule that you can only go through one and then you have to... Because that's the way I think it was with D-Day and, I don't know, Butterfield seems to like those kind of rules. But um, if you go any other way, there is no communication. So the only way these guys are in communication... Jesus, I'm... Just fat fingering this thing left and right. I think this one was hit. Uh, he's only in communication if he can go through two units. So I gotta mentally remember to check that. Um, all right, I think their turn is done. So now we go to our turn. And we can either activate those red units up north where we were just talking or we can activate these guys. And we're gonna activate these guys and I'm just gonna add a fixed artillery to it um, because I don't really want to activate the red guys at all. I just don't think they're gonna do anything for me. So we got a lot of situation here. Um, this guy is almost destroyed, but he's across a river. So I think we wanna finish this guy off. So we're just gonna move and move and we got him flanked and we're going to attack him and we're going to add fixed artillery and we're very close to the west wall so we're within range and then his tactic is uh engineers which i think means he gets a damn 
position. And uh, so he's gonna get the improved position uh, again. I think he already had one before. Uh, so off we go. So he's a two chit minimum. We're one, two, three chits. We do have a four strength unit, so that's gonna make it four. We played a combat tactic that's gonna make it five. So two minimum, five maximum. We have five, 10, 11 strength to two, so it's five to one odds. Two minimum, five maximum, five to one odds. Let's get this out of here before I mistakenly. All right, here's two. Okay, only defender has armor. Uh, definitely not true. Only attacker has armor. That is true. He takes a hit. Is it greater than two to one? Yes, it is. Is it less than? Nope. It's greater than two to one, so two hits there. And what did I say? I said uh, we can go up to three. We can go up to five. We drew two. I'm going to draw three more. There we go. City or forest? It is forest. Uh, greater than three to one. That is true. Defender is elite. That is not true. He's actually green. Defender green. He takes a hit. Okay. So, this one and this one cancel each other out. This one cancels the improvement. Position. And so, he is taking two hits. So I can tell you right now that the two hits, uh, he's going to retreat if he can. So uh, looking at his, uh, he has a clear path to here. In fact, that is his retreat path he wants to do. So that cancels one of the hits. Then the other hit is gonna be a hold check. He's on a three, he has two steps, which makes it a five. And I don't remember the rest, so let me look it up. Um, are all the attackers across the river? Yes, they are. So that makes it a seven. He's not surrounded. He's not going to take extra step losses. And he's already retreated, so it's a nine. So we roll, and I rolled a ten. <laughs> okay, so he retreats again. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have taken a step loss, so that would have been nicer. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, all right, so he retreats again and he's gonna go to there. But he becomes dispersed, which is cool because if I remember the disbursement rules, this whole stack is dispersed now because he went onto a, another unit. So the entire stack is dispersed. I don't think you have to keep track that this unit's dispersed and the other one's not. I can look it up. But uh, I'm pretty sure that was what I read. Okay, all right, so here's what I found. He is dispersed, the other one is not, for purposes of attacking and activating. However, if we attack this stack if any unit in the stack is dispersed, the entire stack is dispersed. So, yes, he had to make it as convoluted as possible. Um, but uh, that is done. And yes, we get to advance. And this guy's going to stay where he is. That one will advance. And we'll go ahead and advance both of these units forward. And I can't advance again across the river because of the damn river. Although there is a bridge there. Um, I can go across a bridge. So this armor could go across the bridge, but he's only a strength one. So I have to be really careful. So I'm going to keep him back here. It's a full strength bridge. So, um, meaning, I mean, it's, it's not damage. So I think that is what we're going to do with that. And, uh, oh, we do take a hit. So we got to resolve that. 
I'm not enjoying that part of this. So I have some infantry I can hit. My armor's on the verge of being destroyed. These are green infantry, so we'll go ahead and hit them. Hold on, I thought white was green. Maybe it is. It's pretty interesting how they get hit and now they're, I guess because they got hit, they're no longer green. <laughs> they saw some combat. That's pretty funny. Um, okay, that brings us to the end of my impulse. So that means we gotta do one more for him and then we're done for the day and probably for the night for me. It's getting late. I have to work still. I still want to read this rule book, guys. I, I really think that I can, I can sharpen this up if I can just read the rule book one more time now. Um, okay, so, but playing like this is way more fun, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay, uh, the 18th Airborne Corps, deploy all Corps reserves. Let's see if the, oh, there are 18th. Yes, there are. Uh, there's three of them, in fact. One, two, three. So uh, that's definitely what they're doing. So now we got to go to the... Uh, they're going to do Method A only. So we have to check candidate hexes. It has to be empty. In the cores area, able to trace supply within proximity of a German unit. Then, not in danger of surround, not in a German city or town. Finally, not adjacent to an allied unit. Unless it's a position hex of five or six. Or the unit is out of control and would be in communication after placing the reserve unit. Okay, so that's what we got to do. And so these guys are the 18th. And so if we look over here, you can see the 18th is this little squiggly line right here. So anything north of that. So uh, that's where they're going. And uh, you can see there, there's units already here. So that's where they're going. And I'm pretty sure uh, one's going there. And I'm assuming we have to do these in number order. So I will do that. Um, so uh, it says within three hexes of the unit in the same division, Within three hexes of a unit in the same core, or within three hexes of a unit in the same army. That's the, um, and then if there's more than one position, it's always the highest uh, hold value. That's the reason why I was so quick to go here. Um, I think that is, actually, I think I did that perfectly. I think that is exactly where he goes. Um, so it said the same division, which is the 7A. None of these are the 7A but it's the same core. So uh, we're deploying 7A, which I guess never existed before. So now the next candidate would have been this one, but I think it said it can't be next to another allied unit because it's trying to close the gaps. So what's interesting is it would go here, I think, because it's, and it's, although it is in uh, jeopardy of being surrounded, so, I don't think that would work. It's in jeopardy of being surrounded. So then my next candidate is there, and I think that one wins. Uh, because basically we're, we're, we're worried about the guys up north there. And then I have one more to place. And because we're doing these in order, I would say that he would go here. Uh, because this is a four, which is a pretty nice number. It's within three of somebody within his division. I'm assuming that after I place him, he's there for purposes of placing him. Uh, or do I not do that? I mean, that's... Um, please let me know if, I, if I'm assuming wrong there. I don't think he's going to go up here because we have Piper here. And this guy's there. So um, that's highly contested, and it's actually next to another unit. So if I'm trying to, like, close gaps, 
this is actually a really good spot for closing gaps. I would also argue that this one is too, um, but then uh, given the choices, this one has the highest hold value, so that's the reason why I backed them up. So those are my answers. Uh, another candidate would be this one. There's a six right here. And because Piper's here, that is within three, right? And then Piper's there and there's a six here. So actually, I'm going to change my mind on this one, which is only a three, and put him there, which is a six. That's where I think they're gonna go. I'm looking at the highest hold values that's within three of somebody within the same division. And since this guy went first, he was now there, so now we can stagger these other ones off of him, anchor them off of him. If I'm wrong and I have to anchor them off of these guys, then that's a different scenario. In fact, I don't even think I can place three if that was the case. But one of them for sure would have been here, and then one of them for sure would have been there, but then the third one I think I'd have, pro I'd have trouble. But... I don't know. I mean, if I'm doing it wrong, then I'm not going to like it because I actually think this is sort of cool that they're smart enough to, you know, they know that we busted through and made a gap. And so they're trying to fill the gap. And that's where the reserves are coming in to try to hold these different towns. Um, I'm really feeling thematic here. So I really hope I'm right. Um, but yes, that ends the day. And I am going to call the night... I think largely because I want to check two things. I, I am going to check this and make sure that's right. And then I want to check the communication thing because I'm just too curious and, and I don't want to forget either of those. Uh, so maybe um, I will get to do that. And I'm also going to get these uploaded. So some of you are like beasts. You just watch these things as quick as I make them. So, uh, so very good. I, I'm so impressed. Uh, anyways, um, thank you as always. Um, having a good time. Uh, even if I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, I'm still having a good time. This is a, this was a great game. Thank you for suggesting this to me. It's definitely up my alley. And so uh, thanks for watching and joining me at the table.